You're listening to the LJS Podcast, brought to you by LearnJazzStandards.com. If you get value out of today's episode, consider adding value back by leaving us a one-time monthly or annual donation at LearnJazzStandards.com slash support. We appreciate your help. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Brent. Welcome to the LJS Podcast. This is a podcast where we're talking everything about jazz. And if this is your first time visiting the LJS Podcast, I want to give you an, an especial warm welcome. And if you are returning again, listening to the LJS Podcast, welcome back. So glad to have you again. And on today's episode 37, I'm going to be talking about how to tell stories with your jazz solos. How to tell stories with your jazz solos. Uh, This is something I'm actually very excited to talk about today because I really think that this makes all the difference between a mediocre solo and and an excellent, mind-blowing, amazing solo that everybody wants to listen to. But before I, I jump into that, I just want to invite you, if you haven't yet done this, to join the Learn Jazz Standards community all right this this podcast our blog our website it's a jazz community and i want to invite you into that and the best way to do that is to go and sign up for our newsletter and you can do that by going to learnjazzstandards.com slash newsletter and and when you sign up for our jazz community you are getting weekly jazz tips and advice from us but you're also getting on the inside of of what's going on all the new stuff that's coming out with us and, and you're getting things that others just simply aren't in. Another little added bonus for signing up is you get our free ebook, A Jazz Guide to Practicing. So be sure to do that. Be sure to sign up for our newsletter and join the Learn Jazz Standards community. Okay, so telling stories with your jazz solos. Have you ever been watching a movie and noticed the actual structure of it? Okay, it starts out... And, and they're establishing the storyline. They're establishing what the the entire plot is going to be about. And then it starts progressing. And, and there's usually some drama. So things start getting a little bit intense. Usually there's some sort of twist in the story. Something that you weren't expecting. And things get more dramatic and heightened and heightened until it reaches its climax. And then it comes down smoothly for a conclusion. Right? That's, that's how a typical story goes from a book, from a movie... And, and they're interesting. It's, it captivates you. It, it keeps you sitting there for hours watching or reading engaged, completely engaged. And I don't know about you, but my favorite jazz solos do the exact same thing. When I'm listening to those solos, I'm captivated from the very moment it starts. It starts telling a storyline but it keeps building and building and getting more and more interesting. And there's so many different factors involved in that of, of how to actually construct a solo like that that really excites the audience and gets them engaged in what you're playing. And I really, really believe that that's the big difference between a mediocre improviser and a great improviser is being able to tell a story. Now, there's a few things that are involved in telling a story. And that's what I'm gonna go into right now. So the first place we need to start when talking about telling stories with our jazz solos is phrasing. Now, phrasing gets down to the nitty-gritty a little bit. How do our sentences sound? Are they complete sentences? Are they complete thoughts? Do they create nice phrases, nice paragraphs, if you will? And and that's what we need to consider because if we can't do that at the very least, we're going to have a hard time creating a storyline, aren't we? We need to be able to speak correctly so that people can understand understand what we're trying to communicate with them. So consider this sentence really quick, rather this phrase, and... Tell me what you think is wrong with it. Charlie Parker is good. He has a saxophone. He plays it well. I want to be like him. He pioneered bebop. Charlie Parker is a really smart guy. Okay, what's wrong with that? Well, it sounds choppy, right? It's a bunch of 
small mini sentences all piled together and they do make reasonable sense with each other they're all related to charlie parker and how good of a saxophone player he is but it's really annoying to read it's so choppy it's broken up it's hard to really get engaged in something like that all right now i want to do another sentence and you tell me what's wrong with this one Charlie Parker was an iconic saxophonist who came to the forefront when he led the pioneering of bebop, which was a departure from the danceable style of jazz playing in the swing era, and bebop turned jazz into more of a virtuosic music that focused on the talent and ability of the musicians, which has in many ways still remained a staple part of modern jazz today. Whew, I could barely breathe while I was saying that sentence. So you probably guessed what's wrong with that one. It was a run-on sentence. It just kept going and going and going, and everything was just piled together. Sometimes it's hard to even make sense of it because everything just flows together. And if you really dissect it, of course the sentence made sense. But it was just too much for the ears. It was hard to get engaged with that. But I hear this happening all the time with improvisers. They're making choppy phrases, they're making run-on sentences, run-on paragraphs that just keep going on forever, and it's hard to get engaged with material like that. So the first place to start if we're really wanting to create interesting solos that are ultimately going to tell a story is we have to pay attention to our phrasing. Are we phrasing in a way that presents a complete idea, a complete thought that makes sense? Is it choppy? Is it running on too long? Does it flow together nicely? These are the things that we need to be thinking about if we want to start telling great stories with our jazz solos. Now, I also want to touch on space for a second. Space is incredibly important to have in your jazz solos. Like we just experienced with that run-on paragraph, it, it just keeps going on forever and ever, and there's no space for anything to happen. And I find that happens a lot with jazz improvisers, where they just keep playing and playing and playing because they feel the need to fill up the space. They almost feel awkward if they stop playing. Well, that's a big mistake. You want to leave breathing room in your solos, and that has to do with phrasing. You want to play a complete thought, a complete phrase, something that makes musical sense, and then leave a little bit of space. In some cases, you might want to leave a lot of space. In other cases, you might want to leave a little bit of space. But it's all about developing the maturity to know when to use space, when not to use space, how long of phrases you should play. Now, to help you practice this a little bit, first and foremost, go to the greats and listen to their solos and examine what they're doing. You always need to be listening to what the great jazz musicians that have come before us are have done to understand how to create great solos, how to create great phrasing, and even learn some of their phrases and try to figure out how many bars did that go for? Why did that feel good when they played that? So first and foremost, go there. Now, another little practical way that you can practice this is to take a tune that you know really well, a jazz standard perhaps that you know really well that you're experienced with. It's not a challenge to play that song and do a little exercise where you play a two bar phrase and then you leave two bars of space, play a two bar phrase, leave two bars of space, and you can change it up too. play two bar phrase and then leave one bar of space two bar phrase, one bar of space. And you can do all sorts of different variations of that and challenge yourself to see, can you carry a line that makes sense for two bars and then leave space and then pick up where you left off in the next area of the song, the next chord progression of the song. Give that a try. That's a great practice to work on. It's not necessarily exactly how you should perform, but it's great ways to practice phrasing and start getting that inside of your solos. Okay, so phrasing, it's the first place we need to start if we want to be able to tell stories. If we can't get complete thoughts together that, that make sense, that make musical sense individually, all by themselves, we're going to have a really hard time pairing that up with other phrases to ultimately create an interesting storyline. Hey everybody, just taking a quick break from today's show to talk to you about our e-course, 30 Days to Better Jazz Playing. You know, I get emails almost every day from jazz musicians asking the questions, what do I practice and how do I practice? They know where they want to be in their jazz playing, they know how they want to sound, they're just not exactly sure how to get there. And that's why me and the LGS team have created our new e-course, 30 Days to Better Jazz Playing. 30 Days to Better Jazz Playing is an audio e-course 
that brings you through 30 days of focused, goal-oriented practicing where you're going to be working on things that will actually improve your jazz playing. This course is designed for all instruments and for all skill levels and is really great for anybody looking to practice with purpose and to make real improvement in their jazz playing. If you want to learn more about this e-course, go to learnjazzstandards.com slash 30 days. That's learnjazzstandards.com slash 30 days. I hope to see you in the course. Now, arguably the most important factor when talking about telling great stories in our jazz solos is development. Development is crucial. You can play the hippest licks, the hippest lines, the best single serving ideas, but if they don't run together in a logical way, if they don't serve a purpose of telling an ultimate storyline, they're all for nothing. They might sound good in the moment, they might sound amazing, but then if they don't make sense with everything else, what's the point? So what do I mean by development? To develop means to evolve, it means to build off of it and to change. And when something evolves, it does so gradually and it does so not apart from its previous environment. So consider this sentence for a second. I was going out for a walk when I noticed a strange object lying on the pavement. Okay, now, this might seem like a great sense. It is a strong sense. It's not entirely creative, but it, it describes a definite action. It paints a basic picture of the scenario, and then it leaves you with something to keep reading. It, it has a trigger, something to trigger your curiosity. All right, now here's the next sense for you. As I walked past a grocery store, I realized I needed to buy some milk. Now, now do you see the problem here? The sentence completely ignores the fact that a strange object was found lying on the pavement. Now, didn't you want to know what that strange object was? Instead, it bypassed it completely and went to a further moment on the walk where you walk past a grocery store. Now, I know this seems like a, a funny example, maybe a basic, maybe boring example, but so often I hear musicians play solos that sound a lot like these two sentences. They might have a full phrase, a full idea like we just discussed earlier. It might make sense, that phrase. But then they move on to something that almost makes no sense to it at all. It just kind of bypasses it. Or even if it's related a little bit, it kind of just kind of left an idea hanging. Something that was ready to be developed hanging. It didn't go to the next logical point in the story. And, and it wasn't even a twist. It was just off topic completely. You know, and, and if you actually had a conversation with somebody like that, if you were, you know, talking to, to your friend and, and having a conversation like that, it would make no sense. It would be bizarre to watch. If you were watching a movie and that was the kind of dialogue that was going on, you wouldn't be interested in it because it wouldn't make any sense. You'd be confused the whole time and it wouldn't be engaging. So in our jazz solos, we need to have development. Do the ideas that you are creating connect together. That's an incredibly, incredibly important factor to talk about. Because if we can't do that, then we can't tell a story. And when I say telling a story, I mean it literally. I mean, we have to actually create stories. It's not just music. We can't just dismiss this as music. I always say that music is language, jazz is language. And I always say, I mean that literally. It's not apart from language. It's not apart just because we're not actually talking with our, with our mouths. Uh, if we're playing an instrument, or maybe you are, maybe you're a vocalist, but it's it's aside from that, it's still a language. And, and in the same way, we need to tell stories and make sense with what we're saying. So do your ideas connect together? Now, the next thing when it comes to development that's incredibly important to talk about is does your solos have trajectory? Okay, so maybe you're connecting ideas together that make sense, but are they going somewhere? Are they, are they ultimately leading somewhere? And you know, if you think about the books and, and, and movies that are so great that you watch, that you read, they all start somewhere and then they end up reaching that climax and then they end up concluding. And I think that's a good way to, you know, at least sort of think about your solos. You don't have to stick by that strictly, but to at least imagine your solos that way, moving in a trajectory. 
right? You, you don't want them to kind of uh, peak too soon or, or not peak at all. I, I know that happens a lot when I listen to beginner improvisers is they might jump into a solo and lay out everything on the table right away. And pretty soon they have what I call a monotone solo. It's just kind of the same wavelength the entire time. Just it's up in one intensity and it just goes straight through until it's over. Well, that's kind of boring if you think about it, right? It doesn't go anywhere. It's not pulling you in any direction. It's just kind of staying in one spot. So maybe you want to think about easing into it a little bit. Or maybe if you do start intense, you have to raise the intensity somehow. Or you have to change it up somehow to make it interesting, to make it climax, to make it move somewhere. So you have to consider the trajectory of your solo. It can be tempting just to jump into your solo and, and lay down an idea that you had already pre-imagined and, and then just start to take off from there. But you need to slow yourself down and kind of imagine where do you want to go? How do you want to get there? You want to have a clear start, a clear climax, and a clear finish. These are things to start thinking about when you're in the practice room working on improvising. Don't just think about playing over chord changes. Don't just think about how you can make the hippest sounding licks. No, think about the trajectory of your solos. Does it have a start? Does it have a climax? Does it have a finish? Okay, so now a little bit of practical uh, application here to help you practice development. And I really like this exercise a lot. It's very simple. It's not complicated at all. But what you do is you compose a lick. It can be over a chord progression, like a 2-5-1. It could be over a single chord. But you take this lick, you develop it, get it under your hands, get it under your fingers, whatever your instrument happens to be, so that you really know that lick really well. And then what you do is you start trying to find as many variations of that lick as you possibly can. Change it up a little bit. Take out notes. Add notes. Change pitches of some of the notes. But make sure they're all related to each other. So you're basically evolving this phrase that you've created into as many different variations as you possibly can. And in the process, I imagine that you're going to start developing entirely new phrases and new licks altogether that just kind of start building off of that. It starts evolving into something new. But either way, you're imagining all these different ways to, to move from that original idea to the next. And I think that's one thing that I love most about my favorite solos is that they have a theme and they, they kind of keep repeating that theme and then it keeps moving in the next direction and evolving and changing and then it goes to another idea from that idea and it just keeps building and building and building. And that's what we want to be doing. So that's a great exercise. Take an idea, find as many variations as possible. Hopefully it evolves into a new idea that you keep creating even more variations as possible. This also is great for your ear, to develop your ear, to open up your ear so that you can start developing a lot of different ideas and, and not having to worry too much about the execution on your instrument, but rather following your ear. So development is incredibly important to have in your solos. If you don't have it, you're stabbing yourself in the foot as far as creating an amazing story. All right, that's all for today's episode. I want to thank you for joining us. Thanks for listening in. Thanks for tuning in. And I want to hear from you. If you have anything else to add to today's episode and you're on the website, leave a comment in the comment section below. This is a jazz community. We don't want to just be hearing about all my ideas. I want to hear from you as well. And remember, if you got any value from today's podcast episode, consider adding value back by leaving us a one-time monthly or annual donation. You can do that by clicking the support button if you're on the website or go to learnjazzstandards.com slash support. We appreciate it your help. Next week, we're going to be coming out with episode 38 of the LJS podcast. Look forward to seeing you then.